Good morning, class. Good to be here on another Sunday. The Lord has blessed us to be here, which is January the 23rd. And we thank God for that. A whole new year. We've been in the new year, well, three weeks, I guess, three weeks or so. And we're just so thankful, for, thankful for all that the Lord has done for us. And we're going to continue to thank Him, you know, because He is so good. And I'm so thankful that we're here. We're still on virtual, but I just, I just miss you all so. I just want to see you, just want to pinch you, or touch you, or just look at you, look into those beautiful eyes, and just, I just want to see you. So maybe it won't be long that we'll be, you know, doing that. But things got to get a little bit better. Last time we talked, the count was going up, and right now I think today I heard it just so that a standstill. So we'll see you know, what the Lord is going to do when we depend on Him to do it. Because we're not going to act right as humans. And we're not going to do what we're supposed to do. But today we're going to start our lesson. But we're going to have prayer first before we we'll go into our lesson. All right, let's bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, we come today just thanking you, God, for your many blessings. Thank you, God, for your love and your power. We just thank you, Lord, for all that you do. We thank you, God, for your precious son, Jesus, who died on the cross that we might have right to the tree of life. And we thank you, God, for giving us this opportunity to come here and do our Sunday school lesson so the kids will be able to hear something. And, you know, we're not in our classroom, but we're here, and we know that we all have books, and we want you to, you know, continue to use the books you know, and follow me on my lesson. So when I do make an error, which we do sometimes, you know, you're right there and you can correct me. You can call me or text me or just whatever. And we thank you, God, for our past and first lady. And we thank you for Brother Lance for making all this possible. And we ask that you be with us and our children, if they've just learned one thing today. And we're talking about leaders. And, you know, we know that children start out early being leaders or being boss or want to be number one and everyone this to them. We want you to get into their heart, Lord, and just bless them. And we thank you, Lord, for them. And we ask all these blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we said we're going to start with our lesson. And the subject this morning is just leaders. And the big idea, justice, judge, and priests. We have justice, judges, and priests. But first of all, we're going to read the lesson story first and go into that and ask, they'll talk about that a little bit and answer those questions and just follow along with our books. You have your books, so we're on page 22. You see where that's at? All right, we're going to start with our lessons. Monique and Wendy were both part of a student council at their high school. Monique was treasurer and Wendy was the secretary. Over the semester, it had come to the council's attention that most students on council felt that there was too, busy, too many resources going to the athletes and not enough going towards the programs that advance STEM program subjects. Monique and Wendy, they chatted, they chatted about this for a while and decided it was something that should be come up into their next meeting. When they were sure to add it to the agenda, Fernando was student council president and a top athlete on the soccer team. He listened to the concerns in the meetings, but when the time came for him to be present, inf present information to the principals and to the teachers and to the staff, he said the complete opposite. You know, we go through this something things like that sometimes. We think we got people, you know, behind us and going to work with us and we're going to get this. Then all of a sudden they shy away. They get up and you out there by yourself. That happened in life. <laughs> Even though his job was to represent the student body to the staff, he decided it was in his best interest to keep the status quo. <laughs> all right, the last question on this is, what should Wendy and Monique do? You know, they out there, got, they got this problem where the athletes was taking all the funds and all this and everything was going to them. So then she saw that the president didn't even stand behind them. So what should those two girls do? What would you do? If you was in this situation, what would you do? 
All right, we're going to read the questions. What is the job of the student council? You all in school and you have student council. What is their job? They should make sure that everyone will receive fair justice. Just like the athletes and the other one, be fair justice. That's their job. All right, number two. What was the student body concerned about in the story? What was the, the body, what was the girls concerned about? What was their, it was too many resources going to the athlete and not enough going to the STEM sub, subjects. All the funds was going there and all the things. What would you do if you were in Monique and win this position? All right, we asked that earlier. What would you do? I believe I would go a little bit further, you know. His job was to go to the president and the staff and all that, but he didn't. So what would you do? I believe I would go a little bit further. Sometimes we have to go, you know, over. We have to get someone else to go with us, and we have to go over them and go to a, you know, higher office and try to get things done. All right, so that's the that's story on, you know, justice and judges and priests and they were justice and judges and priests and in our lesson we'll be talking about justice judges and priests but first of all I think we'll read a little bit of background and get you you know on this um, and then we'll go you know to the questions all right after 40 years wandering in the wilderness all right class who wandered in the wilderness for 40 years we know that it was our Israelites, our good old Israelites, our Israel people. They were ready to become a nation. God wanted Israel to live in a manner that would reflect his government. In this transfer of power, Moses stood as intermediate. He was the military right there in the middle, and he had to do serving the prophets and judge. In the book of Deuteronomy, God restates and reaffirms a new generation, the decree and the ordinance given to Israel, starting in Exodus with the Ten Commandments. We know how it all started. We know where Moses was and how Moses received the Ten Commandments. So it all started there, and we were supposed, they were supposed to abide by that. All right. In the books of Leviticus and Numbers, the descendants of Israel were instructed throughout the book of Deuteronomy to be careful that they do as the Lord has commanded. They had to be real careful because, you know, the Lord is really, you know, he wants you to obey. He wants us to listen to him. And they had to be real careful about, you know, doing this. And they would live long and prosperous in the land. They were to be an example for the other nations of God's power and blessing. By administering justice as a civil society, God, through his ordinance, decrees, and precept, set the culture for Israel as a mark of his presence. His handprint makes Israel a peculiar nation that worshiped the true and living God. And that's how they were peculiar. They were different because they worshiped the true and living God, not idols and not all these statues and stuff but they worship the true and living God. <clears throat> Just a fit, uh, God, through his prophet Moses, instructed Israel as they became a nation to be governed by the standards of right and wrong. How are we class governed by the standards of right and wrong? Or what do we do here on earth? What do we do? Most people, we get a lawyer, we go to court, and we get things done. And the, the officials of the court, who's in order, who's in charge? All right, the judge is in charge. So what his ruling is, that's what's happened, and that's where it, what's going to be here. God is righteous, just, and upright in all his ways. He set expectations through his commands that those placed in civil authority among the tribes and towns be submitted to God as the highest authority. He directs that leaders be chosen from among the people to administer justice, just as Jephro, Moses' father-in-law, had advised him soon after escaping Egypt. 
and Jeffrey had to talk to his, you know, his father-in-law, Moses, because Moses just thought he could do everything himself. And we as a people know that it takes others to help. It takes others to come in and to help us. So he had talked to Moses about that. So now, instead of everything being on Moses' shoulder, he just stripping it out to each of the nation, the people. Those chosen were to be people who feared God, were considered trustworthy among the people, wise, impartial, integrity, able to discern between right and wrong, and not subject to bribery. Justice is at the heart of God's character, and he hates imbalanced scales. God hates that. Moses employs the judges and officers among the tribes to have an unwavering commitment to justice and truth above all representing the people and making decisions when upholding the law. God recognized that's the way God wanted and that's the way God wanted it to be. They were all told to seek the Lord, go to the tabernacle and seek counsel for the Levitical priest and judge. So we had Levitical priests and we had the judges. This is the order that they had, they had to, you know, go to. The Levitical priests were to be the lockstep with God, to hear their voice. That's what they did. They heard the voice. And the priests was to serve as spiritual advisors to judge, to support their discernment in interpreting the law. The judge was in charge of rendering the decisions to the matter, like Supreme Court in our time. So back then, the judge, they all was appointed judges at this time. And that last answer came from the judge. And that's where we go into our lesson today on just leaders. All right, our lesson is taken from Deuteronomy, the 16th chapter. 18th through the 20th verse, and the 17th chapter, 8 through the 13th verse. All right. And this is, appoint judges and officials to each of your tribes. You all, do y'all remember the tribes that we had? All the tribes of all Jacob's children and all that stuff. You remember the tri tribe? Try to think of some of those names. It was 12 of them. And I know you remember some of them. i give you one, Gad. All right, and you know it was more than that. And you think of the other 11. <laughs> Appoint judges and officials for each of your tribes in every town the Lord your God is giving you, and they shall judge the people fairly. Do not pervert justice or show partiality. And it's because he's your friend, you can't do that. Do not show partiality. Everybody, same rule. Do not accept a bribe for a bride binds, binds the eyes of the wise and twists the words of the innocent. Follow justice and justice alone so that you may live and possess the land that the Lord your God is giving you. In case, if cases come before your courts that are too difficult for you, the judge, whether bloodshed, lawsuit, or assaults, Take them to the place of the Lord your God would choose. Go to the Levitical priests and to the judge who is in office at that time. Inquire of them that they will do you the verdict. You must act according to the decisions they give you at a place the Lord would choose. Be careful to do everything they instruct you to do. Act according to whatever they teach you and the decisions they give you. Do not turn aside from what they tell you, to the right or to the left. Anyone who shows contempt for the judge or for the priests who stand ministering there to the Lord your God is to be put to death. See, God, God didn't play back then. He'd be put to death. If you didn't listen or do what they had asked you to do, you'll be put to death. You must purge the evil from Israel. All the people will hear and be afraid and will not be contemptuous again. All right. 
you don't do that. Whatever they say, what's in rule. Now, here on earth, we go to judges and stuff. What do they do? They give you a sentence. Sometimes they say, you know, they throw it out the courts and all that. And sometimes they'll give you life in prison. And then sometimes you'll put to death. That's here on earth. And we know that. All right, let's do our questions. What does Deuteronomy 16, 18, 20 instruct the people not to do? All right, you have your books there. Look down there, it's 18 to 20. All right. Appoint judges and officials to each of your tribes in every town the Lord your God has given you, and they shall judge the people fairly. Do not pervert justice or show partiality. Do not accept a bribe, for a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and twists the words of the innocent. All right. All right, your next question, read. What does Deuteronomy 16, 8, 2 instruct the people to do? All right, they done that, and we just read um, 18 through 20. And what else? Follow justice and justice alone so that you may live and possess the land the Lord your God is giving you. All right, number three. What are the judges to do when something is too difficult for them to figure out? What are the judges to do? All right, that's number three. Read it. What do you think? You tell me something? All right. What are the judges to do? They to advise them, you know, which go, which is the right way, and that is eight and nine. In case cases come before your courts that are too difficult for you to judge, whether bloodshed, lawsuit, or an assault, Take them to the place of the Lord your God would choose. Go to the Leviticus, the Levitical priests, and to the judge who is in office at that time. Inquire of them, and they will give you a verdict. That's what they, the people was told to do. All right, number four. Why do you think the punishment is so harsh for not listening to the priests and judge? Read verse 12. After we read it, we're going to say why. Anyone shows contempt for the judge or for the priests who stand ministering there to the Lord your God is to be put to death. God wants obedience out of us. He always has wanted obedience out of us. We have to do what God say. And sometimes we err, sometimes we slip, and he will forgive us. But you don't make a habit of this. But this in this lesson is when you go to the next level, which is in the courts, which is the judges, and they have to judge, and they go by what God has said in his word, and you will be put to death. In today's scripture passage, judges, officials, and priests are instructed to work together to ensure justice among God's people. And we said earlier, we as a people, we must work together. And before we could work together, we have to love each other. You know, we got to have that bonding between us. And if we love each other, we can work together. We can get, you know, things done. As Israel works to establish itself in the promised land, they need to create standards for keeping justice among the people. Remember, class, a whole bunch of people. Lots of people. So you got to keep justice. Those who, who are most powerful are normally those who make the law, both today and in ancient times. That's today, same thing. One that is, you know, most powerful, those are the ones that make the law. However, in Israel, the law was given by God. Everyone, no matter how powerful, was subject to God's law. The work of a judge then, and even today, was constantly susceptible to the corruption. There were very high standards in place for judges to help make sure everyone 
will receive justice. And that's why, you know, today, make sure everyone will receive justice. And we here as people, we here to help, we here to love, and we hope that, you know, we get close to people where we don't have to, they won't have to go to that high step up to the courts room and to the judge and be sentenced. We are here to help and try to do what we, you know, supposed to do. God, through the prophet Moses, instructs Israel as they become a nation to be governed by his standards of right and wrong, governed by God's standards of right and wrong. And we know right and wrong, and that's the way God wants it to be. All right, we just thank you, class, for this lesson today, and we thank you, Lord, for, you know, thank you all for all that you've done, and the Martin Luther Orator Contest was great. We enjoyed that, and, you know, children, after I thought sit and listen, I said, you know, they've learned things over the years. They remember things that has been said, and a lot of that has been said, you know, through Sunday school and through Bible class, and you've done a wonderful job, and you look nice, everybody look pretty and decent, not stuggy, shruggy, or whatever, you look good, and we thank you, you know, for that, because more than Bethel was watching, other people were watching, and other people have called me, so everything went good, and everybody really loved you, and we want you to remember to wear your mask, continue to wear your mask. We don't know how much longer, but right now, continue to wear your mask, wash your hands, keep that distance, and stay well, you know, in school and wherever you go, just stay well and do what you're supposed to do. We'll see you next time, and we love you.